Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining for our, uh, one of our Master Your Marketing webinar series. My name is Kate. I'm the Content Marketing Manager from Main Street ROI, and we are very excited today to have a Quizio here presenting for us a webinar called the Ultimate PPC Performance Benchmarking Webinar. Uh, this series is also presented by other iFlu and Optimizer. Um, Optimizer will be presenting in December, so we encourage you to join us for that. Uh, today's webinar will be recorded, and we will send out a replay of the webinar along with the PDF of the slides for you within the next 24 hours. So you can make sure to check that out. Uh, with that, I'm going to start from Aquizio, who can get started on the webinar. Great, thank you, Kate. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, we're happy to be here. I just want to thank Kate also for including us uh, into this uh, Master Your Marketing series. We're excited to be back and co-hosting a webinar with you. Uh, we're to have <laughs> yeah. So here, let's let's just get into it. So we today are going to talk about PPC industry benchmarks um, from about fifty thousand campaigns. This is a new study that we just put together at Aquizio and we're happy to kick it off um, with you folks today. So this entire series is, you know, master your marketing, right? And so how can we here at Aquizio help you marketers out there do better every day? And in particular, um, you know, to PPC because we are a PPC platform. Today, I hope you away from in an hour or so is one where do you stand with your PPC performance compared to the rest of the industry it's one and two is how can machine learning help you move the needle in your marketing efforts um, and then we do have a little bonus material with a little stuff of the week to advertise so I am Beth Tuey I'm, I'm VP marketing here at Aquizio I've been doing this gig for a while. I've been in marketing space for over 15 years. I'm a speaker, I'm a mentor, I'm an entrepreneur, um, particularly in, in the tech community. Um, that's where we're situated. And I am joined today um, by our ever so brilliant Tamash. He's our lead research scientist at Aquizio. And Tamash, I'll let you say hello and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Tamash. I'm I've been with Aquizio for I think it's six years now and have seen a lot of the company more broadly in the internet marketing world. And I, as Beth said, I'm mostly in charge of our data and algorithm development here at the company. And just having a great time these days with all these exploding technologies in data science and forecasting. That's awesome. And so Tamash plays a pivotal role in building out our machine learning algorithms um, that work, you know, towards optimization for you guys, the marketers. So thanks, Tamash. And Tamash will be in and out of your web not talking about the most fun stuff. So uh, I'll go through the boring stuff first. How's that, Tamash? Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, uh, so stuff like housekeeping, uh, just really quickly before we get into the data, uh, because this is a very data heavy presentation. Um, the replay, like Kate, will be here. Um, don't worry, you'll be getting it into your inbox. If you have any questions, please, we encourage you to ask them in the chat window. This is the perfect time to ask all your PPC questions and have them answered. We'll try to leave at least 15 minutes at the end for that. You can tweet. Tweets are always appreciated. Um, a Q and a Okay, so who is Aquizio? Just really, really briefly, if you're not familiar with us, uh, we're an online acquisition platform um, using Google, Facebook, and Bing ads. So we have award-winning suite of machine learning technology. Our, the technology itself is called Aquizio. And for about 10 years, um, today we have, you know, two and a half million campaign adjustments a day for over 400 clients who run um, thousands and thousands and thousands of campaigns. And we were just recently, as recently as four weeks ago, we were acquired by web.com. Um, so we have a family that we're excited to work with them and continue our mission um, to build PPC tools for marketers. So that's who we are. And 
um, I would love to know who you are. So if you could, um, in the in the chat, if you could just, you know, really quickly, just let us know what industry you're in. Are you in legal? Um, are you an agency? If you could just let us know, that would be great. And I'm going to give you guys um, maybe 10 to 15 seconds to do that. Kate, do you see some answers coming in? I sure do. So we've got uh, some home improvement, um, a couple of media agencies, uh, real estate, let's see. Wow, it's like rapid fire, <laughs> professional services, legal that's beautiful. services. Okay, that's <laughs> okay, this is great. So all of you folks out there, this is perfect. This this webinar is for you. You're definitely <laughs> So the next one is, um, I'd love to know who we're, who we're addressing here, and then we'll kind of cater the talk to either agencies or advertisers or both. So Kate, can you run that? Do I you can have a question ready? Of course, you got it. Perfect, perfect. So you guys can just let us know. Um, an agency in other words you're building marketing campaigns for clients or you're an advertiser and you're building campaigns for your own company I'll give it like three more seconds here All oh right. it's pretty even split. and then let's see oh. no worry so it looks like yeah uh, we have a pretty solid split, 49% agencies and 51% advertisers. Okay, amazing. Okay, great. Good. Well, okay, so we, we, will, we will make sure that everybody um, gets, you know, what they're looking for today. And third question, your level of AdWords experience? You, so you can also launch that question, and that is the last poll question for the beginning of the webinar. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for participating in the okay. poll. I really appreciate it. This helps All us right. understand so, um, what your needs are. Okay, and it looks like we've got 21% are experts, 20% so nice wide range for us. Okay, okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you, everybody, again, for doing that. So um, we did um, this report a few months back. We published it. It was an enormous undertaking on our on our part. Um, you know, all of our accounts and campaigns between January 2015 and April 2017. We aggregated them together, and then we compared accounts that had a similar ad spend. And similar ad spend meaning not plus or minus more than 10% variance. And then we split out the ones that were using the machine learning technology inside of Aquizio and those that were not. And we compared them, um, their performance from the month one that they started with Aquizio and then month three into Aquizio. And what that report told us was how important is optimizing C campaigns. And I'm not going to go into this report today. Um, but you are welcome to go and look at it. It's an ungated report. You can find it at our website at quizio.com. Um, but what happened is after this amazing data that came out of this report was we had so many more questions. That there were. The first question that we wanted to answer was, okay, great. What about at a more granular level? How does performance look? for industries specific because we know that performance varies so much from industry to industry and so we did today's new report and today is the first time we're at this um so it's 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 a smaller um study of with fifty thousand campaigns um and eleven thousand advertisers it's contained within one quarter which is q3 of 2017 so it is uber recent um, we took the geographical areas of U.S., Australia, and Canada. The total ad spend was $124 million um, on the aggregate level that was spent in that quarter amongst these advertisers. And these are the industries. So you see these uh, 12 industries on the side here. And I think that a lot of you are going to find yourselves. Um, 
Okay, so that's this is the preface of the report. Um, I also want to take a note to let everybody know that we are looking at medians. That's what we're reporting on in this report, and why. So often in marketing, you'll hear, you know, our, our average is this, average benchmarks. Uh, because averages actually lie. They uh, can sometimes have a misrepresentation of data, and uh, here's why. So, and Tamash, uh, you're the expert on this, so I'll run through this, but if, if, if there's anything that you'd like to add or correct me on, please do. So, medians and numbers. Let's say we were looking at four campaigns, okay, and we look at their performance improvement or, 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 or the opposite. So let's say there's four metrics we're looking at. There's, you know, minus 100%, 40%, 40%, and 180%. Well, with these four cases, the average is 40 the mean is also 40%, okay? Now, in example two, whoops, let's say it's not 180%, that fourth metric, but it's 420. Well, what happens to the overall aggregate numbers are, well, the average is now 100, and the what it means is at least half of the uh, metrics in the study attained this metric, attained, so at least half of these four had 40%, okay? So medians are less susceptible, susceptible pardon me, to today. But it's important that you guys understand that and you have that frame of mind when you're comparing yourself to these numbers. Now, what we're going to be looking at are these four KPIs. Um, I hope that you're all familiar with them. Uh, Click-through rates, cost per click, cost per acquisition, in these industries. And so what I did here was we just, we added a few examples of actual campaign clients uh, inside of the platform. So retail includes, you know, um, appliances, carpet stores, jewelry stores, comic stores, is retail outlet. Travel includes agencies, hotels, resorts, and so forth. So if you want to have a quick look here, kind of identify yourself, um, that would be great because then moving forward, you will be able to see where your benchmarks are within the vertical that pertains to you. Just to uh, throw in a little sure. bit of fun stuff, as uh, Beth just showed you all those uh, different industries we are looking at, it wasn't self-reported. So all our information is actually looking at your accounts and the, let the accounts speak for themselves. So we take a look at your set of keywords and you're in the automotive industry. So we didn't have to poke every one of our advertisers to tell us what their industries were that they were working in. We just let the data speak for itself. Right, right, which is another example of why automation kicks ass because it has processes and data um, at an enormous level um, easily, right? Right. So, yeah, yeah, thanks so much. That is super interesting. Um, so, uh, here we're looking at the ad spend. So, also, this is also important to understand the data that we were looking at. And I'm going to let you through that because you. You're the expert so again, here. Here, what we're looking at is just a typical ad spend in the last quarter of 2017 that we just finished. And for each industry, we were trying to show what were the typical minimum, the medium, maximum. See that it, the range is really broad. You can have campaigns that spend as little as just $2 in animal care. But on the other extreme, you have somebody who's spending $17,000 in the last in the three months period. But I think for most of you, the takeaway here is more looking at the work client base is in small and medium businesses. And this is what mostly we are trying to optimize for. And you can see that typical ad spend in most categories is in the few hundred dollars per month at most. And that kind of gives you an idea of what the typical group accounts we're looking at. Perfect. Thanks, Tamash. So why is this important to understand for you, right? Well, it's it, the answer is so simple. It's because it varies tremendously um, from vertical to vertical. So how much do you be paying for 
is 150 acceptable or do I need to be paying more like 450 to have a, a, a solid overall performance on my campaigns? So let's dig into it. Um, we're going to run through these top metrics uh, at starting with cost per click. So here, on the higher range, uh, we have, for example, financial who are paying $5.19 median for um, cost per click. What does that mean? Well, that means that at least half of the marketers in that vertical are paying at least five. So, what does this mean for you? Well, you can you can benchmark yourself against these. So, for example, if you're a retailer who you see there at the bottom, who's paying a dollar thirty-five per click. Well, if you're paying less than that, then you're better than half of the other retail marketers out there. Okay, if you're paying way more than that, then you're probably going to want to step back and look at what is happening with my cost per click and how can I or how can I work towards reducing that. That said, there is a caveat um, with all of these metrics that you know everybody uh, should be cognizant of is that every business you need depend on your location, the seasonality, your competition, the day of, of um, you know, the day of the week, the time of the day. There's so much um, that is taken into consideration when you're bidding for your cost per click that it's okay if you don't into you should, you know, it's definitely um, important to work towards the best cost per clicks that you can have, and that does not necessarily mean the cheapest, right, Tamash? Right. So what happens with cost per click is sometimes um, we like us really pay a little bit more. We'll see more conversions coming out at the end of our at the end of our purchase path um, for PPC. And Tamash is actually going to run through some scenarios where that is the case a little bit later. Okay, and don't forget, guys, if you have questions, send them through. So click uh, rate. Now click through rate. There's no question here. Everybody wants the highest click-through rate that they can possibly get. Um, so we see here the the highest performers are real estate and travel. Um, they, you know, travel is killing it, and so is real estate. And and there's could be different reasons for that as well. Could not be location um, that there is a small impression size, and so just by sheer a matter of having less impressions, you are click you know your click through rate is higher so there's all of these different scenarios that work out here um, there's also different issues there's many so for example google themselves they don't publish these kinds of benchmarks but there are thought leaders out there that do um, so wordstream they had a benchmark report in 2015 and they they average um, click through rate was 1.92 um, Pin, they published a really great article um, about click-through rates as well, and they say 2% is a good click-through rate, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop trying to do better. Um, here, you see here, these median um, click-through rates are high um, and of so we know that in today, in 2017, as early as, you know, three months ago, this is what you know, the, all those advertisers were getting on click-through rates. So, again, these are good benchmarks for you to go ahead and strive to, to achieve. Acquisition. I would love to know how many folks out there are measuring your cost per acquisition or not. Um, it's so important to look at your cost. What that means is um, you're looking at how much did it cost for me to acquire a customer, and then you could divide that by the lifetime customer. Or value that how much you're on your ads, right? So, for example, if it costs you one hundred dollars to get one customer from your PPC campaign, and that one customer over a few years, like that means their lifespan, they bring in you know a thousand dollars. What on your PPC investment, and this is also immensely important for you agencies out there and consultants because this is the proof that you need to take back to your clients and say hey guys PPC is worth the investment and let's talk about optimizing and investing more right so cost per what 
happening here in the industry is that the cost the cost amount is is heavily correlated to your cost per click so in other words the higher you're going to pay per click the higher your acquisition cost so that just makes sense if you look at legal for example their cost per acquisition is two hundred dollars and that's rather high um, but they're also paying almost per click and versus true too did you have anything to add on this one tamash no it's just basically an important metric to track but obviously in order to really figure out your return on investment, you need to look at how much you actually spend to get that conversion. So clearly there as well. Exactly. And let's talk about conversions for a second. What is a conversion? So inside of Acquisio, um, the, the, the user, the advertiser actually sets the conversion. So we, we, that could be anything from um, a newsletter sign in, could be an email, um, it, could, it could be various things. So that would be something, again, for us to dig into um, to understand even better than what we're looking at here in the aggregate level. Um, but so it's not, this is a cost per acquisition, but that acquisition may not necessarily be a cost. Just, we have to, I just want to put that out there as well so everybody understands what we're looking at here. The, the acquisition could be anything that the advertiser had set. So if we look at the those conversions, which as I just mentioned could be a newsletter sign up, it could be those number of conversions um, divided by the number of clicks will give you your conversion rate. So how many people, all of these eyeballs that are clicking through my ads and going to my landing pages or my website, how many of those eyeballs are converting and doing what I want them to do? And numbers so let's look at who's the high performers again legal is coming out as a high performer but the best performer are contractors and professional services professional services includes you know electricians plumbers um, they have great conversion rates and I'm gonna go out on a limb and hypothesize that the conversion has are in a sort of an oh shit category where people are googling you know I need a plumber there's an emergency and so the first person who they're calling is most likely getting the job um, so they, they they you know that works very well for advertising works for contractors who are in that um, the conversion rates are lower for food and beverage uh, but otherwise, the, these conversion rates also are, are very positive and are something, it's a, an important metric to work on improving um, continuously. All of these metrics that we just showed you are campaigns that are not running on machine learning. So in our sample size, about half of the total ad spend that we were talking about, which was $124 million spent in the quarter that we um, we not using machine learning. Um, and so what we're going to do now is run you through the ones that were using machine learning and how much of the needle did it move for machine learning. So how can machine learning help? So, before we do jump into that, I do want to explain the difference in uh, learning and not machine learning. And then there's all these nuances, um, you know, in the tech data talk, which are, you know, there's automation, there's machine learning, there's AI, and what, what does it all mean? So, for us at Aquizio, we, our technology is absolutely machine learning. And what it is, is it's a sub that gives the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Okay, now I'll give you a second to, to read that. And what that means is computers can self-learn. They are programmed to learn and improve. Okay. So at Aquizio, that means that, you know, our machines are faster and smarter and they never tire. Um, compared to a human and a campaign manager. And that shouldn't be a scary thing because, um, you know, machine learning is a new wave of tools that better us marketers to do a better job and deliver better performance for our clients and for small businesses and, you know, who are at the focal point of, of our economy. And so we have to jump on to this technology bandwagon and, and learn how to use them to the best of our ability. 
is what algorithms do in particular. And Tamash, I'll let you run through this. All right, so this is the fun stuff that uh, you were talking about. <clears throat> so mainly our algorithms try to stretch your advertising dollars to get to the maximum return. Your Our goal is to get out of your advertising budget, squeeze out as many clicks or conversions as possible, but with the additional constraint that we want to make sure that you last the whole month your advertising. We have seen time and again that competition gets thinner by the but most of our advertisers are going to be in the auction to the very last day of their monthly cycle and being able to get cheaper clicks or conversions just because the competition has already got out of the auction. In fact, most of our uh, advertisers can also spend their monthly budget on pace and on target with typically a one to two percent accuracy plus or minus to your target budget that you set. Here we are looking at data on mainly AdWords search results because that's largest chunk of data we have many of our advertisers also advertise on Facebook and Bing and we also have solutions for them to try to figure out what is the best way to split my advertising dollars across all these different channels. They have different properties and I'm just trying to figure out what is the best way to allocate this so you get your also making sure that your money is not parked in some channels where you can't even spend it. So question is then why does it matter for our marketers? Well primarily because Marketers are busy trying to get more things in line and not necessarily have to figure out what is the best way to advertise on Facebook versus AdWords and what is the best way to set bids so I can advertise the whole time. What to do if I only have a small amount of data? Can I still get some mileage out of my information? And in order to get results on your machine learning, you have to own large data sets. That's the only way to get information that's relevant. However, with our technology, even small advertisers can tap into basically the knowledge of the group and get great results with having own large data sets. So we solve those problems that you as marketers may find daunting and we can do it at a scale at frequency where not, no human can manage that. So then what is performance advantage with machine learning? Here in this table, we are looking at the same CPC, click-through rate, CPA, and conversion rate, but we are comparing results between machine learning and without machine learning. Looking at these four methods for CPC to deliver lower results. Therefore, here anything with a negative sign is improvement on click-through rate is the reverse we want higher click-through rate therefore anything with positive sign is an improvement cpa is similar to cpc we want to be able to reduce it your machine learning should increase the conversion rate again is same as ctr we want to be able to increase it with the machine's help in optimization just to zoom in a little bit more on a specific metric here this one shows the industry conversion or without machine learning. As Beth has already mentioned, here with conversion rate, we're measuring what the advertisers define as conversion. So it could be again a newsletter sign up, it could be a purchase. It's really up to the advertiser to define what is the relevant conversion for that optimized to the information that they provide us. As we can see, typical Machine learning gives you an advantage on practically any category, but you can see financial and automotive as basically standout categories where you're converting with learning than without. Yeah, they pretty much blow it out of the water when it comes to uh, machine learning. They turn it on. And I, it, what's also interesting here is that everybody, so when, when you have such a drastic jump in conversion rates on people 
parts. Um, monetary output of that is can be substantial, um, either for yourself or for your clients. Um, so it's it's something that's not to be ignored. All right. Are you so going to run through this few... one? Oh. Nothing. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I was saying that. Let's take a few examples where, um, just for a comparison's sake, as Beth mentioned earlier, you're, as in with typical card advertising, your mileage may vary from the numbers we post here. But just the uh, financial gives you an edge over not doing machine learning in practically any measure that we looked at here. You decrease your CPC by 10%. Click-through rate goes up by 14%, CPA drops by 44%, and conversion rate skyrockets, as we saw in the previous picture. Now, it's worth in mind, to those without machine learning. There we are comparing ourselves to potential amateurs who just have very simple understanding of AdWords or any advertising, and they just set a campaign up once and let it run on its own to agencies who are in their being advertising so that we don't exactly know who we are comparing against ourselves in that regard it's a mix we know for sure but as you can see clearly with financial there's a definite gain for machine learning over not doing any specific optimization on everything looking at medical and dental the picture is pretty similar here there's a slide dropping click-through rate but Sometimes we see on our optimization results that in order to better stretch your finance, your monthly dollars by lowering your CPC, your actual for your total advertising dollars, then at a higher CPC, but often lower CPC comes with a lower click-through rate. So that can also happen when you're looking at optimization of course, an important thing to consider too is that click through is not a metric. You can have 100% click through rate on one impression. That one click won't uh, support a business entirely. Right. Good point. Looking at a different sector in automotive, you can see that our CPC and click through rate are actually higher than one of the reasons why we said that your mileage may also vary. When we are comparing our results with those of our non-machine learning um, counterparts, we found that in automotive, we are trying to actually spend about twice as much you know, than we are in learning. And obviously, all things being equal, unless you have a, a much larger advertising area you're drawing from, in order to spend more, you also have to potentially spend higher per click to get to that spend rate because one all each month. But regardless of that, you still provide an improvement in CPA and conversion rate. And Right. And and I just to clarify um, for the listeners, when we say spend more, it's budget. It, it's, budget. it's just um, so what we often see is a budget attainment metric that we, we measure closely as well. And what we see is that folks have a hard time. So let's say they set $10,000 a month for their campaign. They have a hard time spending that $10,000. And but they should. <laughs> they should probably spend it because they will have a better return. And so that is, Tamash, um, what, what he means when we're trying to spend more. And so what we see is with machine learning, um, we have a three and a half times better budget attainment rate overall at the aggregate level. And in the future, just piggybacking on that comment, is we also in the same study we saw that uh, not only we have a better budget attainment, but as I mentioned, our with our system, we typically aim for getting you within one to two percent of your target budget. When we're comparing our results with some of our um, there are cases where they easily exceed their target budget by 10, 20 percent, which means whether it's an agency that then potentially has to handle it with uh, their advertising clients in terms of refunds, or you just simply blew your advertising budget on things that you may not want. 
thank you for the advertising. Yeah, that's a huge problem. Hey, client, I overspent on your money. I'm sorry. Can you please, you know, pay up? <laughs> so, Red's another uh, excellent point on 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 the the use of a tool that helps has only optimize control um, control our campaigns. So, and I think that there's one last industry for you, Tamash, that you wanted to talk about. Yes, retailers are showing similar results to automotive. Again, here. As with automotive, we are comparing ourselves with our desired spend goal is about twice as much as on the non-optimized side. Therefore, again, we are bidding higher to try to spend that money for you in that budget period we are looking at while getting higher click-through rate, a decrease in conversion, conversion rate. Amazing. Thanks. Okay, sorry guys, I think my screen is frozen. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, there was one so more that we had. Sorry, can you go back? I think we skipped one. Did it? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yep. Yes. I, my, my We're talking about comparing things at a percentage scale, but here we have a slide that shows the actual values. So you can uh, look at those yourselves later on. We'll be sending out these slides to everybody who's participating in the webinar. So this is here for your perusal, exact numbers. We're also going to be building out um, more materials on based on this study um, that we're happy to email out to everybody as well. So great, this is a lot of data. Thank you everybody for, um, for, for staying with us. <laughs> so, uh, these are all great. Like we were looking at, you know, plus 10% and then 200% conversion increase. And so what does this all really mean for you? And I just wanted to do one simple example to put some concrete numbers behind these benchmarks. For example, um, your handyman and, or your client is a handyman and you're spending $500 a month. Very simple, low budget. Without machine learning, we're looking at a $1.35, um, cost per click okay and he falls into the retail category by the way these are all the retail benchmarks with machining which seemingly sounds like a bad thing but wait there's more <laughs> let's keep going now our click-through rate is better with machine learning so in the end let's have a look without machine learning i am getting more clicks which seemingly sounds um but and then with machine learning, I'm getting less clicks. I'm getting 307. Okay. Now the conversion rates, because my conversion rate is so much higher with machine learning, at the end of my funnel, I have more conversions with machine learning. So I'm paying more per click and getting less clicks. However, I have two extra conversions on top of all of this for the same $500 budget. Let's take it further. Let's say the average sales price for Mr. Handyman is four hundred dollars, right? So, four hundred with conversions, he's making twelve x his return. That's his ROI, twelve x versus ten x, and that's eight hundred extra dollars in his pocket every month, simply by using a machine learning empowered tool. So, I hope that this 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 is a concrete this is all of this data for for folks and this is at a very small scale um at a higher scale with better conversion rates we're talking about significant dollars here all right takeaways uh, really quickly so you know what 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 do we learn from all the Food and beverage and retailers are paying the lowest cost per clicks legal and financial are paying the highest um, you know, for all sorts of reasons, um, competitive landscape, um, the auctions, all of that fun stuff. Interestingly, uh, though, the contractors and the professionals conversion rates. And if, you know, if you guys were to take away anything, I just would love for you to remember that, you know, your situation is unique. Um, you may experience different benchmarks than the ones that you're seeing now. It's just important to investigate if you're extremely far off from what you're seeing here. And you can always, always, always improve. So measure.
test their campaigns, and then use tools to enable that optimization. Bonus material. Okay, we have a poll for everybody. What does everybody think the best days of the week to advertise are? Would you think it's early week, late week, or weekend? And would you comment that poll? Great. Uh, all set. Sorry for the delay on that. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> I have the other one up. All right. Uh, 51% of people have voted, so we'll give it another couple seconds. Great. Oh, my content um, director just messaged me that Handyman is not in retail. <laughs> She's so right. Uh, we actually, we changed that. So let's say he's not a handyman and pretend he's a, um, a handyman shop. So he sells tools. <laughs> I'm going to close the poll here. That's a good clarification. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, it everybody. It looks like, let's see, we had 59% of the people guessed uh, early in the 20% Fifteen percent on the weekend. Okay, I'm I'm so impressed. Uh, you guys know your stuff. Amazing. It's early week. It, literally across the board for all industries. It's early week is the best time to advertise. Um, we see Monday, 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 um, Monday Tuesday for some contractors. Saturday is the only one that stands out um, for best time to advertise being the weekend. The Saturday. So. Thank you, everybody, for participating. That was really interesting. And, and if you're interested to dig into the numbers for every number we post about, um, and the link is right there, best time to advertise by industry on our blog. So, folks, this is, a, this is a wrap. I've included some resources here, an Unbounce um, report, uh, if you're curious about landing page benchmarks, because landing pages and PPC hand. PC Hero has a great blog post and so does Instapage. And finally, um, you know, this is where you can learn more about us. Um, we are Aquizio. On the right hand side um, is our, our website. We have a free 21 day trial. Our Aquizio platform is for the advertisers and we have uh, an SMB product that is called Promote and you can sign up to promote at getpromote.com. Um, that is a fully automated advertising system. It's all hands-off um, focused for local SMBs. Everybody, um, we have questions that we can answer. We have 15 minutes left. So we've had some questions definitely along the way uh, that we can take a look through um, and maybe review the data, but also if anyone has any questions now that we've kind of gone through everything and you want to well, um, make sure to answer those as well. So uh, we had a question come in from Daphne asking um, if you could elaborate a bit on why you think Monday is the best time to advertise um, she said for retail, for example. Yeah, that's a good question, Tamash. Do you, uh, do you want to have one? Tamash, are you there? Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I was just <laughs> gathering my thoughts why best time to advertise Monday is in retail. So when we were looking at um, this data, day of the week in terms of their CPC performance and also CPA click through, similar metrics that we were showing here. And when you're talking about best time to advertise is not necessarily in a sense that, okay, well, if you advertise on Monday, that's when you're at the mail. But it's also taking into account when is best time to advertise in terms of when you can get conversions at a lower rate. It's possible that everybody who's gone out to um, <clears throat> shop on the weekend has seen a few things in the store, but then they get back and try to look at the particular item, but it was not in stock for what I was looking for, size-wise, color, etc. Come then Monday, they get online and try to actually find what they were looking for that they couldn't find in store. 
Right. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. Um, let's see. We had another question uh, come in. Oh, hold on one second. I just can I pick one here? Oh, just one, one more thing oh, yes, to add, Tamash, please. Yeah, please. Oh, Tamash, you first. Won't the advantages decrease when more advertisers use machine learning? And I'm sorry, that's can, a very can you repeat good question. that? Could you repeat that, Tamash? What was it? Yes. Won't the advantages decrease when more advertisers use machine learning? Oh, excellent. And the answer to that one is probably yes. But we yeah. have already seen some of that happening in the industry. If you look at, for example, Google's quarterly reports on their revenue, they also usually their clicks at. Those have been steadily coming down over the last few years. So what we see here is that actually optimization technologies are exploiting the inefficiencies in the market. So ultimately, everybody trying to squeeze out that uh, little extra money that's left on the table because people are not ideal calculators to figure out what is the best price to pay at any given time. That's right. And so, so as technology evolves and becomes more, the more important it is for us to develop and um, and maintain and grow the tool set. And to that point, now is the best time to get involved with machine learning so that you can reap the benefits now before the new benchmark and with if that makes sense. Cool. Do we have a, any more questions? Tomas, do you want to keep going through, or do you want me to to field a couple? Can you field a couple? I'm also yeah going through and trying to. We had somebody um, who asked, and this might just be more of a general question. Uh, he wanted to know. Um, for beginners, what are some key things or practices that can be done every day that will allow them to be on their way to becoming skilled, a top performer um, in uh, any industry or become successful with PPC? So seeing all this of this data, what are some like tips that you can offer for people to, who are just getting started? That's great. Uh, Tamash, I'll let you talk about bids and budgets, and then I can talk about optimization on uh, keywords and ad copy. All right, so I think in terms of if you're doing it on your own, first of all, I think it's important to get a plan with it before you get going. It's relatively, we see quite a few of our clients who come to us and turn on optimizations. It's a very hard that they have no chance of spending. And as you try to actually spend that money, you end up paying extra for the additional clicks that you're getting because of the competition in your market. So it's useful to know what is that you're really trying to aim at, both in terms of your spending and in terms of your which you're looking at and keep reevaluating it and make sure that the two are in sync, that you're not spending too much per click or too much per lead just to be able to spend that advertising money. Or conversely, you might be able, might be setting yourself a too small budget, whereas your market is much bigger and with additional funds, you can capture more business at the same price as the one that you had already. Right, right, exactly. So that's that's an amazing tip, um, Tamash. And um, and then on, on top of that, best practice bunch of different um, ad, you know, the actual ad text, um, the messaging, your calls to action within the, the copy, any kind of offers that you can add into, into the copy, add extensions that you can add, and, and sure, you know, you want to pay, how are my click-through rates, how much am I paying, what are my conversions, <clears throat> and then switch it up. And, and that way, it's really the only way um, to, to, to move the needle and then get to a, a benchmark that you're happy with. That makes sense? And then, of course, landing pages as well. 
huge of your PPC campaign. So once people click, where are they going? How well is that designed? How consistent is the messaging from your ad to your landing page? And what's the best way that you can um, have them convert? That's great. Uh, we can do another sure one. Is. <laughs> uh, another question that came through, this is from Kristen. She said, how is the quality of the clicks that come from machine learning different from just using an AdWords campaign? She said, getting more clicks is always ideal, but, but what about the quality of the clicks themselves? Nice. Well, I mean, that's basically the million dollar question. What is the color of a click? And it's a very good question because yes, you can get more clicks, but are those clicks actually better clicks or worse than uh, what you had for higher quality at a higher price or more clicks at a lower price? And this is, I think, where the next evolution of um, PPC marketing is headed. You need to be able to come up with new measures to and Edwards now offers you a large variety of conversion events that you can track on your site. And I think that will be a key to getting better results instead of pure clicks, CPC, and the number of them is to find out how you can quantify the quality of those clicks how they translate into leads and gather that data so you can optimize to the leads instead of the clicks. Exactly. So what makes a quality click? It's somebody who came with a buyer's intent and became a customer at whatever capacity that is. And so that's the quality of clicks. So, so instead of measuring the number of clicks, as we saw in the example with the handyman, doesn't doesn't matter. He had less clicks with machine learning, but the quality output because the conversion rates went higher. So is it memorable? Got it. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, trying to see if there are something to kind of go along with that. We have a couple of different questions coming in. Let's see. Um, yeah. So about Aquizio and the machine learning algorithms you guys use came from Tom. He wanted to sit, ask, um, what is, are the difference or the advantages uh, does Aquizio's machine learning algorithms provide that Google's does not? Um, so I guess comparing, or, you know, what are, are there different algorithms in various machine learning platforms? And um, can you speak a little bit to that? Right, so seeing uh, Tom's question, one, I think he also asked whether we utilize Google's optimization algorithms. The answer to that one is no, we do not. We have the, our own technologies. Exactly draw the details of how they are different is difficult because obviously Google doesn't really publish information on what they are doing. Based upon where we can observe, I think one main difference between anything AdWords optimization does and we do of having a monthly budget within which we operate. Google, for example, has their conversion optimization where you can specify a target CPA, say, of $10, and they will try to do their best to get you as many conversions as possible. But you will never find out from that optimization whether you could get more conversions at, say, $8 a piece. Whereas with our optimization, our goal is to basically explore that space and see where is that sweet spot where we can spend your money fully within the month. That is 100% um, on point. Um, and also our tool is also a, a tool for uh, super users. And so there's built-in capabilities such as cross-platform reporting, uh, customizable, um, and then the, the, the cross-publisher as well is differentiates us from just using Google, right? So we move money between Google and Bing. We have right. um, campaign cloners. Your... Right, yes. right. We have camp campaign cloners, so it's you, you click 
one again the machine will decide where do i put the money am i going to get a better conversion or click in bing or here from minute to minute it's it's doing this so um, that's that's the other key differentiator and I'm not even sure with our our budget distribution algorithm Tamaj where we can a group, um, and within that group you can pick you know different ad groups and different campaign levels and then and then distribute money within a predetermined group I'm not even sure if Google can do that no they probably well you can certainly allocate yourself um, shared budgets within ad your group but what our tool can do on top of that is again flexibly move money around if you have too much money allocated to one of your group of campaigns that cannot spend the money our algorithm can automatically move it for you to the different one where potentially you're short of funds to really the most or that's it exactly so let's say you guys you have um two campaigns running and one of them wants to spend more money it keeps it keeps hitting its 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 budget every month and the other one is under under spending and it can't find enough to go out and get that well that's what our platform will do we'll move the money around so that everybody make them for the, for less wonderful thank you we had i guess going with that there's a couple of different questions um specifically about how People can get in touch with you guys if they wanted to set up a call or specifically ask about costs and all of that um, to use your phone. So people get in contact so that they can follow up and learn a little bit more um, about a potentially how this could help their business. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for asking, guys. We're happy to talk to everybody. Um, you can email sales at acquisio.com. You can also go to the website and contact us via and us. Um, there's all these different channels. Um, you can email me. Uh, it's B Tuin. Tuin is my last name. So B T H O U I N at acquisio.com. And yeah, we're happy to have those conversations. That's great. Because I think uh, in the first part of, you know, we're at Main Street ROI, we love working with you guys. And um, I think there were some more specific questions that we might not be able to get through to all of them. So if people, have questions for you, I'm sure we would encourage them to reach out to you guys and ask them. And I, I know based on our conversations that you'd be happy to help them when they those questions. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what we did last time, Kate, remember we took all the questions and then we addressed them in a blog post. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah, absolutely. So we could do that again because that, that was a lot of fun and then we can email all the folks and, and then uh, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. That's definitely something that we can, we can say for sure to get back to you with any um, additional questions they have. So um, I think that that's about it for today. Again, this uh, presentation will be sent to everybody via email within the next 24 hours. We'll have the replay and a PDF of the slides. Um, we thank you so much, uh, Thank you to both of you for presenting this uh, great webinar for us. Um, we are so glad to have had you. So thank you for sharing all the insight and the data that you have come up with. Um, definitely learned a lot. Beautiful. Thank you. And thank you, Tamash, my co-presenter. We will be back, everybody, um, in December with our next presentation from Optimizer uh, for the Master Your Marketing series. So we encourage you to join us for that as well and hope that you have a wonderful day. Great. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.